Well, good morning. Wherever you are this morning, I want to very warmly welcome you to this service of worship at St. Andrew's Lecky. There are a few of us uh, gathered here to lead you today. Uh, well, good morning, wherever you are, and welcome to our service of worship from St. Andrew's Lecky. Uh, I'm just at the manse. I've got some familiar things uh, just behind me from the church on Good Friday. Happy Easter. Good morning. Let me see a happy face. Well, good morning. Good morning and welcome. Well, good morning. Well, good morning. Hi, everyone. Hi, everyone. Well, good morning. 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 Morning, everyone. Well, good morning, everyone. Well, good morning. Good morning. Well, good morning. Good morning. Well, a very good morning to you. Well, a very warm welcome to you all. Well, good morning. Well, good morning. Well, good morning. Well, good morning. Okay, good morning. I can pull this one out. Well, good morning. Hi, guys. Good morning. Well, good morning. Well, good morning. Hello, everybody. Welcome, everyone. We have travelled very far. It was worth every single day of our journey. Well, good morning. 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 Good morning. Well, good morning. Good morning and welcome to St Andrew's Lecky. It's great that you can be here together with us as a church family. Welcome. This week, many of us have been reflecting on the past year. It's been one year since the first lockdown began. And we've maybe been reflecting on some of those experiences that we've had together and as individuals. And for some of us, there have been really painful times, times of grieving alone, times of sadness, times of missed opportunities. But for some of us too, there have been those times when we've wanted to celebrate together and we've not been able to do that. Let's take a moment now to reflect on these things and to pray to our Lord. Father God, it's been a tough year with lots of anxiety and uncertainty. Some of us have struggled with, with grief, with illness, and some of us have struggled with trying to keep going and to feel positive about the future. God, we thank you that you have been with us through it all. But Lord, it's not over yet. And Lord, we wanna pray now that you would give us strength, that you would give us your hope and that you would give us your peace, that we would be able to keep supporting and encouraging each other. And Lord, we look forward to a time when we can meet together and celebrate you and celebrate being together as family. Amen. Why don't we join together in the prayer our Lord Jesus taught us as we say together, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever. Amen. Today is Palm Sunday, and it's the day when we remember that Jesus came into Jerusalem on a donkey, not on a war horse, that he is our humble servant king. And we're going to um, praise him and worship him together now.
Good morning, everyone. Uh, last harvest service, me and Nancy showed you how to make um, some flowers in a jar, and and it was a very windy day. We'd like to invite all the children at church to um, make a nice uh, jar of flowers at home and uh, bring it to the church grounds. We want to invite you to um, make the jars again to celebrate um, Jesus rising. So let's watch Nancy show us how to do it. jars drop them off um, at the table at the front of the church um, and you can put them there from Saturday afternoon to till uh, just before church. On Sunday morning next week on Easter Sunday and the other thing we would like is uh, some families to volunteer to deliver both the flowers and some packages to people on Easter Sunday uh, to help celebrate and rejoice uh, Easter and Jesus rising from the dead. And so if you would like to volunteer to help, please let Laura know as soon as you can and then we'll ask you to come and collect some flowers and some other things and tell you who to deliver them to. And the collection point is at the church, half past 12 on Easter Sunday, half past 12 to one o'clock. You can pick things up and you'll be sent off to deliver them Easter Sunday afternoon. Just before our children and young people go out to their groups, I want to share some announcements while we're still all together. 
Um, I want to encourage you specifically to do something today after the service to sign up for a couple of things. It'll only take a, a couple of minutes. What, first of all, the uh, discipleship season that we're going to have. You'll remember a couple of weeks ago I interviewed Ron Clark. Uh, it was before I'd had my DIY, DIY haircut, I had longer hair in, in the video. And uh, Ron was sharing with us uh, the vision for the next few months that we're going to have a very purposeful focus in our church family on being disciples of Jesus, on being followers of him, of seeking to deepen our relationship with him and to do that together. So we want to have an opportunity to, to come together and deepen relationship with one another and with Jesus. And we're going to come together uh, on Zoom initially. Hopefully things will open up more in uh, months to come. But Zoom initially, and it's really for the whole church family. So we'll have some time all together and then we'll break out into groups to think about some of the themes we've been talking about. And uh, if you're a, a younger person, there'll be uh, groups you can join where uh, there's people your age. So what we want you to do is to actually sign up. That would really help with the organisation of the whole thing. If you just go to the website today after the service, just click on discipleship, just quickly fill in your details and then uh, that will help us know uh, who's going to come. And we want to encourage as many from our church family as possible to, to join up. It's a chance to really deepen our fellowship among us and with Jesus. Second thing just before if your young people disappear, is uh, to highlight this coming Thursday, Monday Thursday, we're, we're going to have a, a 16 hour period of prayer, a, a day of prayer. And again, there's things for all ages. We're trying to do something similar to our 24 hour prayer events that we have in church. Obviously, it's going to be very different online, but we've got a whole uh, series of, of different prayer times happening. Uh, and you can see them all on the website. Again, there's a link from the main page, uh, Day of Prayer. There's particular slots for young people, for children. There's things like uh, listening prayer and worship times and healing prayer and offer at different points in the day. The idea is that you can drop in whenever you like for as little time as you like. But in order to be part of this, in order just to keep the event secure, you, you need to sign up first. So even if you just sign up and tick a, a single half hour slot that you intend to come to, uh, that means you will then uh, get the Zoom link required to enter. And then you can use that same Zoom link at any time throughout the 16 hours. But it's, it's necessary for you to actually sign up to this. So again, after the service today, please go straight to the website, Day of Prayer, click on it, just quickly fill out the online form. It'll take you two minutes and then uh, you'll have your entry to Thursday. Right, with that said, children and young people, you can go off to your groups now. Be blessed in the Lord. Uh, another few things just to share before we move on with our service. Uh, we met as a Kirk session during the week. One of the things we discussed was opening the, the church buildings again for worship. Uh, we've decided that it just in light of the fact that we can't actually gather any children or young people on a, a Sunday at the moment that we're going to go ahead with our Easter celebrations online because we feel we can do that better and uh, we can celebrate in the ways we were sharing earlier in the service as well and connect with one another in that way. And then the hope is that things will shift so that we can have children and young people's groups meeting at the same time as the service in the church, which will continue to stream online. And uh, so we intend to launch in the building, actually regardless of what restrictions are in place at that point, we're going to launch on the, the second Sunday in May, just after that May holiday. We didn't think that May holiday weekend was the best weekend to start. So we're going to go for the second weekend in May and we'll keep you posted on the details of, of how you can uh, pre-book for that service. And as I say, even when we're back in the church, because it will be limited numbers, we'll still have the service stream so you can see it and hear it online. Uh, final thing just to share and to highlight is the times of our Easter services. We are going to have a Good Friday service, Friday evening at 7pm uh, 
and then on Sunday morning we're going to have a, an all-age Easter celebration, a family service. Let's continue now in our worship as Carrie leads us in our prayers and we hear God's word read by Heather. Let us pray. Thank you, Lord, that the Holy Spirit calls us to intercession. You tell us to pray in the Spirit on all occasions with all kinds of prayers and requests. With this in mind, to be alert and always to keep on praying for all the Lord's people. This is the way you release your power now and forever. You tell us what to pray in your word. The prayers of intercession unite our hearts to people and places we pray for. The prayers make long-term impact beyond this age and will change the spiritual atmosphere of cities and nations. And prayer humbles us and renews our hope and faith. In our reading today, Jesus enters Jerusalem as a spiritual saviour, humbly riding into the city, showing us what the true king looks like. Jesus doesn't do anything the way an earthly king would. Jesus, the humble shepherd king, is coming to lead his people to salvation. And we come to him each day, thanking him for everything he's done for us on the cross. Creator God, you made this beautiful world in which we live. As we watch the changing patterns of nature, as we see the signs of lovely spring bulbs and we listen to the bird song in our gardens and the countryside, we marvel and wonder and say, how great thou art. Help us to realise how fragile and unstable our surroundings are because we're not doing all that we can. Show us how even small things matter. We need to understand how the most insignificant little flowers, the tiniest insects, each creature and every person in this creation are all part of a wondrous whole, all connected to each other and to the earth. Help us to be good stewards of all that you have entrusted to our care. We ask you to change hearts and help us care about people and your creation to protect your world and not destroy it. There are Christians in the world who so love you, God, and will never let go. Some of these Christians are in a community where they are not welcomed. They face death every day. Help us partner with you in praying for them that they would stand strong in their faith, even in the face of persecution. And thank you that despite the increasing persecution, you are drawing more and more people to yourself. May your love reach them and may all people have the opportunity to respond to the gospel. We pray for the leaders in our church. Give them wisdom and discernment as they lead. We pray that their hearts would be directed first to you, that they would recognise where their true help and strength comes from. We pray that their faith in you would be unwavering and ask that you would continue to pave the way for strong, faithful men and women to serve your people. We pray for our Minister Malcolm and his family. Give them great strength, protection and grace for the days ahead. Bless them and help us to encourage them in the work that they do for you. We pray for every family in our midst. The pressures upon everyone are so great, especially now. Help them to know that you care for them and help them to know how to deal with all the demands placed upon them. We ask your blessing on all our church members, for those we haven't seen for such a long time now, and especially we pray for those who are sick and housebound. Show us ways of sharing fellowship. Be very near to those who are facing anxiety, heartache, those who have lost a loved one, and those who feel they cannot cope. Father, be with those who have had a life-changing accident or crushing diagnosis that shakes them to the soul. 
whether healing comes today, next week, or next month, we believe that you will heal and we continue to praise you as we wait for your answers. God has the heart of man in his hand. He has the heart of our loved ones in his hand. All we can do is pray for them. Only our God can heal and comfort them. So many needs, Jesus, but you are adequate for every need. Your name is powerful and your power is great. So it is in your name that we pray and believe. Amen. Good morning. Today's reading is taken from John chapter 12, verses 12 to 19. Jesus comes to Jerusalem as king. The next day, the great crowd that had come for the festival heard that Jesus was on his way to Jerusalem. They took palm branches and went out to meet him, shouting, Hosanna! Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the King of Israel. Jesus found a young donkey and sat on it, as it is written, Do not be afraid, daughter Zion. See, your king is coming, seated on a donkey's colt. At first, his disciples did not understand all this. Only after Jesus was glorified did they realise that these things had been written about him and that these things had been done to him. Now the crowd that was with him when he called Lazarus from the tomb and raised him from the dead continued to spread the word. Many people, because they had heard that he had performed this sign, went out to meet him. So the Pharisees said to one another, See, this is getting us nowhere. Look how the whole world has gone after him. May God bless to us this reading of his holy word. Amen. God of heaven living in me, gentle Savior, closest friend, strong deliverer, beginning and end, all within me falls at your throne.
Well, as we turn again to John's Gospel, it's good to remind ourselves what the New Testament teaches us about the scriptures that we read, that this is God's word to us. Although it's written by human beings and in and through their human personalities and used with their human intellect, it is inspired by God's Spirit so that the New Testament can say that this is a God-breathed word to us. So let's pray that the same God who breathed this word for us would come near to us by his spirit to open it up to us that we might have right understanding of it and know the life of God that comes from hearing his precious promises. Let's pray together. Holy Spirit, the living God, draw near to us. Open up this glorious book of John's gospel to us. Share with us treasures from heaven, treasures of your Son, Jesus, as we hear your word preached. In Jesus' name, Amen. Well, Palm Sunday is a day for rejoicing. It's actually a day for loud celebrations at the coming of God's King, Jesus. For God's King has come to us. And he's brought the kingdom of God with all the life and light of God and the blessings that come from his hand. He's brought that kingdom near to our lives, so much so that we can reach out and touch it, that we might come under the rule of God's King Jesus and know our lives touched and transformed by his love and his truth, his grace and his mercy. You know, I've been reflecting just this week on Psalm 45, which is a wonderful psalm which celebrates the goodness of God's King, the Messiah. And there's this really memorable phrase within the psalm where it says that God has anointed his chosen King with the oil of joy or the oil of gladness. This sense of the King just being drenched from heaven with the oil of joy is the very fragrance that he carries is joy and gladness to be in the presence of this king it is to be in the presence of joy that brings forth in our hearts celebration and praise and delight in him and wonderfully still in the book of Isaiah in very well known words a, a, a prophecy in chapter 61 about the coming Christ, about the Messiah. It says that the Spirit of the Lord is upon him, upon the Messiah, to do amidst other things, to to bring the oil of gladness instead of mourning, and to bring a garment of praise instead of a spirit of despair. That's what Palm Sunday is all about. And it's been my sense in preparing this week that God actually wants to do something very specific among us this morning. He wants to lift up from or lift off from our shoulders the heavy spirit of despair. He wants to fell the giant of despair in our lives. And despair is a a giant, isn't it? Despair has everything to do with a loss of hope. Just some words from an online dictionary. Despair usually involves deep sadness and emotional pain about something that's happened or that hasn't happened. And something usually triggers despair. Well, this week we marked a year on from that first lockdown there's been plenty of calls for despair in the lives of many across the world and we're not immune to such things as Christians as God's people but Jesus comes with the oil of gladness He comes to share that oil of gladness with us in a way that can take off our mourning 
and transform our despairing into praise of him and his goodness. Palm Sunday does herald the beginning of Holy Week where we focus on the passion of Jesus, his sufferings. And one of the core themes of this week actually is the crushing of hope. For here we are on Palm Sunday and the, the, the expectations of the crowds are raised. The, the, though they don't quite have a clear sense of what this Messiah has come to do, it, it's right that they celebrate and rejoice this in this king because as I've said his very presence is joy. But though their expectations rise as the week progresses and Jesus faces his rejection, his condemnation, his execution, what happens is hopes are crushed. That that sense of, of joy, of impending joy is, is smothered by dark and oppressive clouds as Jesus suffers. Yet during this week and on the lead up to Jesus' sufferings, we, see, we, we, have this, uh, we get to listen in to how Jesus is preparing his disciples in chapter 13 and 17. He's preparing them for his sufferings. He's preparing them for life after his cross and resurrection. And he repeatedly speaks to them of joy. A joy that he shares in them or with them that will be complete, that, that will be full. A joy that's a promise not just for those first disciples but for every disciple after them that would take up the, their own cross and follow him and recognise him as Lord and Saviour and King. And no more clearly does this note of joy come ringing through in this section than in John 16 verses 22 verse 22 where Jesus says to his disciples now is your time of grief but I will see you again and you will rejoice and no one will take away your joy. This is important to get hold of this morning. Jesus promises a joy that cannot be robbed from us, a, a joy that cannot be sucked out of us by any circumstances that we face because it's a joy that's not dependent upon the circumstances that we face. It's a joy of knowing him, our victorious and glorious King who anoints ourselves with the oil of gladness. As Jesus rides in to Jerusalem that day on the back of a donkey, uh, John quotes these words. He says, do not be afraid, daughter of Zion. See, your king is coming, seated on a donkey's colt. I'm sure most of you know that, that that's an allusion back to an Old Testament prophecy, something that we have in the Old Testament or our Bible spoken hundreds of years before about the coming of the Messiah. When we read these words in Zechariah 9 verse 9, rejoice greatly, daughter Zion, shout, daughter Jerusalem, see your king comes to you, righteous and victorious, lowly and riding on a donkey, on a colt, the fall of a donkey. This is where the oil of gladness starts to flow for us. And I want to pick up on, on three particular phrases or, or words that act as a gateway uh, for us into courts of God's presence where there is joy, where there are streams that make our hearts glad, where there's real power to fell that spirit of despair or that giant of despair in our lives. The first phrase that I want to pick up on is where Zechariah says, see your king comes to you, he's righteous and he's victorious. This is why God in his great love for us has sent Jesus into the world. He sent him into the world to bring a, a great victory. 
He sent him to go to the very source of despair and darkness in our world and in our lives and there to bring about a great victory. Jesus is sent back to the very uh, spring of life in our world, if you like, that's, that's become muddied and darkened and polluted by sin and by death and by Satan and the powers of evil. He's gone back to that spring to bring about a victory. A few verses on from now, Jesus has said, I'm, I'm going to be lifted up on the cross and now is the time for the prince of this world to be driven out. He's come to bring about a great victory for his kingdom. And the, the Christian life and the response to Jesus is all about us bringing our lives under the rule of this king, under his saving reign where he can purify our hearts from all that's polluted, where he can remove the, the, the sin that has so stained our lives and, and God's judgment upon our sin, that he might overcome death and, and overcome Satan, where he's sought to put his claws into this world and into our life, where he's wreaked havoc and brought darkness and despair, Jesus has come victorious to set us free and to bring the oil of gladness to us. That, that's the first phrase to highlight. The second is this, rejoice greatly, daughter Zion. That term, daughter Zion, might seem strange to our ears, but it's an affectionate term that God uses throughout the Old Testament for his people, Israel. Daughter of Zion. He particularly uses it to address his people when they are struggling, when there's some source of great pain and distress in their lives, be it for, because, as a result of their own sin or, or the sins of others against them. God speaks to his people, daughter of Zion, in words of tender care and compassion and love, of, God, of words that speak of a God who is a strong and mighty Father who comes to save and rescue us in our distress and to overcome and fell that giant of despair within our lives. Rejoice greatly, daughter of Zion. Third and final phrase to highlight from this beautiful uh, prophetic word in Zechariah is, see this king comes to you lowly and riding on a donkey. That word lowly means literally poor and vulnerable, impoverished. This is the nature of the king and the means of his victory in our lives and for this world. He comes lowly. I was listening on uh, the radio this week to a doctor speaking, a Scottish doctor, I think she was in Glasgow, and uh, she was sharing uh, about the year that she's had. She's one of these remarkable people that within this pandemic year, she's, she's had her first baby and uh, and then she has not only been a doctor on the front line, she's also been a, a patient. Uh, last Christmas, uh, despite all her attempts to protect herself and her, her family, she and her baby got COVID. And she described it as one of the, the darkest times of her life over that Christmas and, and New Year period. And the interviewer asked her, what, what was it like what, what did it feel like as a doctor uh, becoming a, a patient and having COVID and, and, and has it helped you as a doctor? And, and as you would expect, she said, yeah, it's, it's definitely helped me. You know, it's the, the, the empathy that I'm able to give knowing what it feels like to be in that position of patient. She says that be, being a doctor when you become a patient is of no advantage. She used this phrase of what it feels like to be the other side of the counter. 
And she described it in these words, that she felt very vulnerable, very vulnerable. That's exactly the sense of that Zechariah prophecy that Jesus was very purposely fulfilling. Yes, he's the King, the Lord God Almighty, all authority is his. And yet he's come and he's laid aside that majesty. He's made himself very vulnerable. He's truly come the other side of the counter. Sometimes we can get an entirely wrong image of, of what Jesus was like in his time on earth. Sometimes we can see him almost like a, a superhero living just as in the full power of God upon this earth as if nothing could touch him, nothing could hurt him. But that's an entirely wrong image of Jesus. Jesus became fully human. He became absolutely subject to all our human weaknesses. He became very, very vulnerable. And he alone is able to fell a spirit of despair in our lives because he has carried all the weight of sorrow and suffering and darkness in his human frame. Any burden that we can carry, any dark uh, valley that we've walked through, he truly has shared in. He is the truly empathetic son of God and king. And what cause that is for endless praise of Jesus that he the mighty one didn't consider his equality with God something to be grasped hold of but actually he emptied himself he became as nothing as a servant and became obedient even to death upon the cross again just a, a, a few verses on from now John's gospel gives us an insight into into Jesus inner world he cries out now my soul is troubled now my soul is troubled and, and yet he prays may God be glorified you know it's really important that we we never minimize the horrors of death it's no small thing for Jesus, the Son of God, to die upon the cross. And, and, and never view death, uh, the death of any human being, as just a, a, a natural ending to life that must happen. That's nonsense. God has made us for life. Death is, as the scriptures proclaim, that the last enemy that will be put under the feet of Jesus Christ that God will eliminate from his creation when he finally makes all things new. Death according to the scriptures is the, it is the penalty for sin, it is the mark of, of God's judgment upon a, a world that has fallen away from him. And yet God has so loved us He's come with such compassion, such love to us to say, daughter of Zion, I've sent my son, my king, to become lowly, to, to become truly vulnerable, not only to take on the, the sorrows of this world, but, but actually to come as the Lamb of God to take away the sin of the world. And, and to die in our place, to be judged in our place. That that very source of all darkness and despair in our life might be utterly undone as we place our trust in him. This is a day to come into the presence of the King who God has been anointed, anointed with the oil of gladness, who, who comes actually to lift off that spirit of despair, to give us a, a garment of praise, to bring that anointing oil of joy so that it would flow down upon our lives. 
Do you want to know the rule of that joy-giving King in your life? Shall we pray for him to minister to us now by his Spirit? Father, we want to join in the praise of those crowds, for you are the King of glory, our Lord Jesus Christ, and you are the Saviour. Lord, we worship you that you truly have come the other side of the counter. And Lord, I want to pray specifically for anyone that's carrying a great burden of sorrow this morning. May they know a wonderful fellowship with Jesus. May they know the the wonderful empathy of God, that you truly have stepped into their shoes that you have borne their suffering. And because you have borne their suffering, you now come to share your life and your joy. So would you bring strength this day? And would you bring light and even gladness to disperse the dark shadows? And Father God, we praise you too that you have driven out the prince of this world. So we pray this morning where anyone is afflicted, where in any way Satan has got his ugly claws into the life of one who is beloved to you. Lord, would you send any giant of despair crashing to the ground? And would your oil of gladness and of freedom flow in the power of your spirit. Bring freedom this day we ask. And finally Father we praise you and we thank you that you have died in our place. That you face the agony of your soul as you approach that cross and then you knew the full weight of God's wrath upon sin upon your shoulders so that we might be set free so that we might know joy in all its fullness a joy that can never be robbed from us Lord as we worship you in this final hymn may we crown you with our praises may we receive the oil of gladness in Jesus name Amen Oh
Well, may you know the joy in Christ, the King, that can never be taken from you. Rejoice, for the King has come. And may the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son and Holy Spirit rest upon you and remain with you both now and forevermore. Amen.